Hello viewers, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I will take you through the revision on poetry. As I have opined in my previous video, I still maintain that the one of the easiest concepts to handle in English is that on poetry. And in a previous video, I said that there is no difference between prose and uh, poetry. It is just that in various novels, the story is communicated in form of uh, paragraphs, while in uh, poetry, we have stanzas. In stories, we have sentences making up paragraphs, while in poetry, we have lines making up uh, stanzas. Now, uh, there is a poem here that we are going to use to revise the various questions that can be tested in poetry, uh, that is in a KCSE, at the KCSE level. And uh, before that, allow me to ask those who are new here to kindly hit onto the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that anytime we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. Again, to our subscribers, let me continue thanking you. The poem is entitled Rich Men Trust Not in Wealth by Thomas Nash. Uh, rich men trust not in wealth. Gold cannot buy health. Physique himself must fade. All things to end are made. The plague full swift goes by. I am sick. I must die. Lord have mercy on us. Beauty is but a flower. Which wrinkles will devour. Brightness falls from the air. Queens have died young and fair. Dust hath closed Helen's eye. I am sick. I must die. Lord, have mercy on us. Strength stoops unto the grave. Worms feed on Hector brave. Swords may not fight fate. Earth still holds open her gate. Come, come, the bells do cry. I am sick, I must die. Lord, have mercy on us. That is the poem that is here on the a board you can follow with us as we try to go through the various questions there. Question one, the candidate is expected to identify the persona. Always the persona is the voice in the poem, the talking voice in the poem. And uh, it is very, very important and imperative that you look at some of the clues, the contextual clues that leads one to correctly identify the persona. Now in this poem, one such contextual clue that can help us determine the persona, and in most cases, uh, one of the thing you can uh, use to uh, identify the persona is where the voice in the poem seems to be involving themselves uh, pronouns like i where pronouns like i are used uh, my maybe my father if we see my father then it means that the persona could be a child or if there are other pointers to maybe place the persona as a son or a daughter like in this case uh, towards the end of each and every stanza there is this statement, I am sick, I must die, Lord have mercy on us. So the persona is the I, the, the talking voice. And for this matter, the persona is an ailing person because the persona says that he or she is sick and for that matter they must die. Mm -hmm. And then the persona goes ahead to say, Lord, have mercy on us. That also places the persona uh, to maybe 
one of the rich men who he or she is admonishing about putting too much trust on wealth. So the persona could be a rich, ailing person who has realized that riches cannot buy life for them. And uh, it is very important that when you identify the persona, that the persona is an ail a, a rich, ailing person, then the candidate must go ahead to pick up a phrase or maybe a line from the poem that is the evidence or that illustrates that point. Number two, there is the question on what the poem is about. And uh, I advise the candidates that most of these poems are uh, given in English words. So the candidate should go through each and every a stanza and paraphrase maybe in one line each stanza you paraphrase in one line what that stanza is talking about then at the end of all those stanzas like in this case we have three stanzas you now put down all those three sentences three summarized sentences and that will form what the poem is about like in the first stanza the poem reiterates the fact that wealth cannot buy health and all things are temporal. If you go to stanza two, then beauty is but a flower to mean that beauty uh, normally uh, fades. The, whether the, you are the rich among the rich and mighty, then at the end of the day, uh, beauty wrinkles will take a toll on someone and beauty will fade. Uh, stanza three is about uh, strength, how strength, physical strength also meets its waterloo when it uh, comes across time. With the time it also gets to, to fade. So when you put down all those uh, sentences that you've paraphrased in each and every stanza, that will be what the poem is about. So the poem is about the temporal nature of uh, life. And uh, though people are rich and mighty and wealthy, at the end of the day, wealth cannot buy them health. Wealth cannot buy them life. Wealth cannot buy them perpetual beauty and perpetual strength. Uh, number three is closely related to what we have just discussed. That is, mention three things that wealth cannot buy. So that one we have already discussed in what the poem is about. According to the poem, wealth cannot buy health. Wealth cannot buy uh, beauty. That is perpetual beauty. Wealth cannot also buy uh, strength. And wealth can also sometimes not buy one's uh, fate. Uh, number four, the question asks us to describe the imagery in uh, stanza two. And in stanza two, there is a metaphor. There is a, a metaphorical comparison of beauty to a flower. Just the same way the leaves of a flower wrinkles and dries up with the time, beauty also gets to dry up or to fade at a point. Uh, number five asks, who was Helen according to the poem? So, that Helen has also been mentioned in stanza two, where it is mentioned that queens have died young and fair, dust hath closed Helen's eye. And the, uh, the stanza was about beauty. So Helen must be a beautiful uh, queen who died at the prime of her youth. Uh, number six is 
asking about the irony in the poem. So in this poem, it is quite ironical that those who have accumulated wealth and are now wealthy and rich cannot or are unable to, uh, to, to face or to, or to receive some of the things that they feel that the riches should entitle them to, like health, like beauty, uh, like, uh, uh, like strength. So the irony comes whereby there is the kind of helplessness in the rich and mighty and wealthy who seem to have accumulated almost everything. Uh, question 7 asks, why is there the repetition of two lines in each stanza? That is, I am sick, I must die, and Lord have mercy on us. Those two lines end each and every stanza in this poem. And that brings about the helplessness of humanity in the face of death or in the face of their fate. And at the same time, it brings about the resigned nature and now the plea that man has uh, to God, to some supernatural, they, they did some supernatural intervention, having res been resigned to the fact that they cannot uh, do anything themselves. Number eight, we are expected to explain the meaning of the phrase, all things to end are made. So that line really talks about the temporal nature of life. Everything we see in this world, at one point or the other, they meet their dead end. Whether it is beauty, one day beauty must fade, be it strength. One day the strong must stumble and must stoop unto the grave. Whether it is physique, then physique must also fade. So all things in the end come to their end and are temporary. Number nine, what lesson can we learn from this poem? This poem uh, reiterates the fact that all is vanity. And uh, however much we must look for wealth, to help us in this world, we must really know that there is quite a limitation to that wealth. And there are things that wealth cannot buy, like health, like fate, like perpetual beauty and strength. As we come to the end of the questions that we were to discuss on this poem, allow me to make a rejoinder, though it does not help in uh, interpreting this poem. In stanza two and stanza three, something attracts my attention. In stanza two, there is the mention of a queen called uh, Helen. And in stanza three, there is the mention of Hector, who is a symbol of strength. Uh, Helen seems to be brought out as an epitome of beauty. And I tend to believe that this poem must have been a historical allusion from the Greek mythology about the Trojan War. So uh, Queen Helen, who is this beautiful uh, queen of Sparta and married to one Agamemnon, has been uh, as eloped with uh, Paris, who is the prince of Troy, and they go uh, to Troy. So Agamemnon gets to put together a Spartan army, goes after them, and that is what culminates into the Trojan War, which drags for over 11 years. And in that war, we saw uh, Hector meet his dead end after being killed by this Spartan warrior, Achilles. So it was worth mentioning the fact that there seems to be some kind of uh, allusion from the Greek mythology in this point. Thank you very much, viewers. Until next time.